From the National Weather Service in Raleigh, it's Nick Petro with your routine weekly briefing for Central North Carolina. Today's briefing covers the period today through Sunday through the 12th of September. And let's just jump right into the tropical situation because we have Larry out there in um, out at um, oh, 25 north and not uh, 24 north and uh, you know, roughly uh, 55 west there, approximate um, location there. And uh, <clears throat> that, despite the fact that it's well away from the East Coast, there's a lot of energy headed back toward the East Coast. So that's going to give us some life-threatening, powerful, dangerous rip currents along the Carolina beaches the next couple of days. If you check the news from down there, you'll see that there have been numerous uh, water rescues in the last couple of days, just some really powerful rip currents. And if you are headed down there, or if you know anybody headed down there, um, just remind them to, you know, the obvious things to swim at beaches where there are lifeguards. Don't go in the water. If you're not a good swimmer or, or not familiar, you know, look around, make sure that, um, uh, you know, there's somebody nearby with lifeguards and, to um, uh, basically know how to get out of a rip current um, if uh, uh, if you get caught in one by chance. And, and there are instructions at all the beaches, uh, or most beaches anyway, on, on uh, posters, big posters and signs that show uh, how to get out of rip currents. Again, just remind folks uh, that you may know headed down there. Otherwise, we have an area of disturbed weather uh, in the southwest Gulf of Mexico. And the National Hurricane Center says the formation chances are pretty low, but even if it were to become a tropical system, it'd be too far to our east, really, to give us any rain or impacts across central North Carolina. Okay, so that's the situation in the tropics. Here's a current condition, satellite, temperatures, and uh, a, a fairly obvious feature uh, is uh, a cold front here. And well, actually, it's a stationary front. So let me get my terminology right. But it's a stationary front. And it's about uh, kind of right along where this cloud line is. OK, and that, that boundary is kind of meandering. It's not really going anywhere fast. Um, actually, it shows up better in dew point fields. Notice how we have lower dew points north of this yellow line, which you know I use to depict where that boundary is. Lower dew points, higher dew points. You know, 60s dew points, 70s dew points south of the line, and uh, that boundary is uh, helping to you know manifest in this uh, cloud line we're seeing here with clear skies north and cloudy skies to the east of 95 and to our south. Now, if I zoom out, let me clear this. Uh, let me clear this um, drawing here and zoom out. Um, basically, we've got another cold front up across the uh, Midwest and Western Great Lakes, and you can kind of see uh, the difference in dew points there, even a much a much larger difference. Look at these 50s and 40s dew points uh, behind the, the front uh, versus, um, versus, you know, 60s dew points out ahead of it. And there is, of course, a, a warm front that goes along with it, with it as well. And, of course, this, this front is headed to the east and southeast. So as it's moving to the east and southeast, southerly flow will get going and ramping up to over the next 24 hours. So this boundary here will gradually lift to the north over the next 24 hours. And what that means is there could be a few showers, spotty cells, spotty showers across the South Carolina border counties, and maybe the eastern counties, you know, if you're in Sampson County, don't be surprised if there's a passing stray shower today. If you're in Scotland County, don't be surprised if there's a passing stray shower today. But it's not going to amount to much. And then tomorrow, as this front approaches, uh, you know, that southerly flow and moist southerly flow will get going. And uh, prefrontal showers, maybe an isolated thunderstorm or two. Uh, will be possible anytime during the daytime and evening tomorrow out ahead of this front. Okay, so much better rain chances tomorrow, albeit fairly light rain amounts. So that's what we've got going on uh, currently. Let me go back to the slides. And uh, so 
the stationary boundary that I mentioned to our south could give us a few stray rain showers across the southern portions of North Carolina today. And then that front that I talked about will approach us from the northwest on Wednesday and cross our region Wednesday night. This will give us a better chance for rain, albeit light amounts, tomorrow and tomorrow night. And then after the front exits to our east early Thursday, look for uh, skies to clear out and weather to clear out and a bit cooler and drier for the late week and weekend period with high pressure over the area, over the region, giving us uh, what I would say would be a period of really, really nice weather for uh, late Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Look for some nice weather. All right, so how much rain again? Uh, very, very spotty rain today, if any at all. Uh, tomorrow will be the best chance for rain tomorrow and tomorrow night, but rainfall will generally be less than an inch. Um, if you get you know three quarters of an inch, consider yourself lucky. Most places will see a half inch or less. On Thursday, that rain will be moving out, but it's possible early in the day there still could be a few showers lingering, uh, particularly east of I-95, but again, rainfall amounts light. And then look at Friday and Saturday and this weekend, just dry. So, uh, so all in all, not a whole lot of rain over the next seven days, uh, less than an inch for, uh, for sure, um, but, but generally drier weather. Um, Right now, we're not thinking that the rain will be heavy enough for any flash flooding tomorrow. So the ERO is, uh, is, is there's nothing over us. I will point out, though, that on Wednesday tomorrow, you'll notice that there is a marginal risk. We're in that uh, darker green shade, which means uh, isolated severe storms are possible, limited in duration, limited in coverage, and limited in intensity. So, uh very isolated coverage of severe storms. Maybe wind gusts of 40 to 60 miles per hour, hail up to inch is possible. Again, that's with any of the thunderstorms tomorrow uh, associated with uh, with the approach of that cold front, okay? So you can't rule out a, uh, a stray uh, shower or storm, or a stray severe storm, I should say, uh, uh, on Wednesday and Wednesday night, okay? Other than that, low risk for severe storms. The 8 to 14 day outlook, looking at next week, shows below normal favored precipitation. So, um, so here we are in the peak, in the peak of the hurricane season right now. Um, but, but we've got below normal favored uh, uh, odds for the next 8 to 14 days. So clearly, um, you know, there's really no, uh, obviously, a, a big chunk of our annual, or no, let me restate that. A big chunk of our clim climatologically normal rainfall this year tends to occur with tropical cyclones. Uh, you know, you sometimes leftover tropical cyclone activity, sometimes direct hit. Just, you know, it just basically tropical cyclones account for a big chunk of our uh, annual rainfall uh, this time of year. Well, with below normal uh, favored into next week would suggest you know, any tropical cyclones that were to form out, out in the Atlantic would more than likely stay out in the Atlantic. So uh, Melvin typed in a question there, are there any concerns? And I would say uh, probably not, not, not for us here in the next two weeks, uh, Melvin. So a uh, great question. All right, so, so that, uh, that takes us to our, um, basically wraps it up here. Um, and again, a stationary boundary to the south could give us a few stray rain showers across southern portions of North Carolina today. That won't be, uh, won't be a, a, a lot. A cold front will approach us from the northwest on Wednesday and cross our region Wednesday night. That'll give us a better chance for rain, albeit light amounts Wednesday and Wednesday night. And then again, look for uh, clearing, uh, clearing weather on Thursday, a bit cooler, a bit drier for late week and weekend period. But honestly, look at Friday and Saturday. I mean, that's about as good as it gets. Highs in the low to mid 80s under sunny skies comfortable lows around 60 um, Friday night. I mean, that, that's looking pretty good. Uh, looks like our weather comes Wednesday, Wednesday night, maybe early Thursday. I, I bet you we're going to have to do some tweaking to these uh, rain chances here Thursday and Thursday night. So uh, I actually, I think, I think the rain chances will be out of here pretty early Thursday. So that might be a little bit, a little bit overdone there, what you see in the uh, graphics there for Thursday night. There are some hazards and impacts, though, I want you to think about here in the next uh, 24 to uh, hours and beyond. There is a marginal risk for severe storms with tomorrow's showers and thunderstorms. 
Uh, so any th thunderstorms that get going could bring gusty winds and, and maybe some damaging hail. Again, that's tomorrow and tomorrow night. Those will be pretty widely scattered. Okay. Um, but I want you to think about too, Hurricane Larry, although, you know, thousands of miles out into the Atlantic, that still will cause life-threatening rip currents along the Carolina beaches next couple of days. So if you know anybody going to the beach over the next uh, few days, let them know to watch out for that and to swim where there's lifeguards, okay? Or just stay out of the water. <laughs> so anyway, that is our weekly briefing for Central North Carolina for this period. And uh, as always, we'll be back on Wednesday with uh, with an update to the weekend, uh, weekly briefing before we head into the uh, into into the weekend.